Hi, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us for our webinar of Meet the Midwives. I am Leslie Feehan, one of the midwives at VCU and the lead midwife of the VCU Midwifery Service. We are so excited you joined us tonight. We're so excited um, to share our passion of um, midwifery and um, hopefully teach you a little bit about what we do. Tonight, we're all going to introduce ourselves so you can get to know us a little bit. And then after that, I will give a brief overview of midwifery and our midwifery service. We ask that you save all um, questions for the end. And if you have any questions, you can just drop them um, in the comment box and we'll get to them um, at the end of my presentation. Um, with that, um, I'll do the first introduction. And again, I'm Leslie Feehan, and I have been a midwife for um, 23 years, hard to believe. Um, I started at VCU, and then after about seven years, went on to other places and attended births at varying locations. I came back to VCU in 2013 because um, it's a great place to be, and it's a supportive environment, um, not only supportive of what I love in midwifery and what I'm passionate about, um, but also for people birthing there, um, providing a variety of options for all people um, who choose VCU. Um, when I'm not helping folks have babies um, and catching babies, uh, I like to spend lots of time outside. I hike and bike, um, kayak when it's warm and ski when it's cold. And of course, spend lots of time with my family doing all those things. Um, and then if I need some quiet time, I love to read and knit. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me. Um, now I'm going to introduce Melanie Hartman. Um, Melanie and I have worked together for a long time. She has the biggest heart of anyone I know and has the patience of also anyone I know. She'll hang with you no matter how long your labor is. Um, so, which is probably why she's suffering from a little bit of a cold right now. Uh, <laughs> for those long hours um, as a midwife. Melanie? Thanks, Leslie. Um, my name is Melanie Hartman, as Leslie said. I've been at VCU for five years now. Um, I've been in women's health since 1999. I also can't believe that because I'm only 22, so I'm not sure how the math adds up, but um, I have been in Richmond now for 12 years or 11 years, and I found VCU um, to be home now. I really, I have loved being here as a midwife. It's the women that we serve, the families that we serve, the team that we have is just incredible. And I love the collaborative environment. Um, it's just, it's been amazing to come into a place that's truly evidence-based. And I said when I first got here that I don't feel like I have to fight for much. Um, the way that we practice and the way that we want to be with families is respected and held um, and nurtured, I feel like, at VCU. And also the family's wishes and desires are so um, honored there. Um, I, as Leslie said, am getting over a cold, so I'll keep mine short. I was also up all night doing the midwife thing. So um, when I'm not doing those two things, I have two kids that keep me really busy. And I also really like to spend time outdoors. I love to garden. I've been getting my winter garden going on. And I like to bike and hike. And um, I just got a puppy about a year ago. So that's been keeping us also very busy. Mm -hmm. Um, I am going to, I get the pleasure of introducing our brand new midwife who just joined us this, this month, actually, Kate Hobart. Hi, I'm Kate. Uh, I'm originally from the West Coast, but I've been a transplant to the East Coast for about almost 10 years now. Um, I, like Melanie said, just joined uh, VCU this month. So I'm really excited to be here. I came from a practice in Southern Jersey. Um, where I'd been working for the last three years as a midwife. Um, I really love midwifery, and I'm just so excited to be a part of VCU because I think they have something very special, and that's a really exciting opportunity for me. Um, my new favorite hobby is exploring Richmond um, with my family, and uh, so if anybody has any good tips for me, I'd really appreciate it, uh, especially <laughs> good eating spots. 
Um, well, there's there's lots of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm just so excited to be here um, and be a part of the team. Um, and you know, I haven't been here long, but this next person, uh, you know, she already has such a great reputation, and I hear such wonderful things from patients about her. Um, and up next is Holly. Holly McGrory, one of the midwives. I've been at VCU now for 11 years. And at the same time I came to this area, I'm from Florida originally. And I've been a midwife now for going on five years. I get to do my first renewal of my license pretty soon. <laughs> like a big milestone in my life. Um, before that, I was an intensive care unit nurse here at VCU. And um, as Leslie already alluded to, they really do support you in your goals and your dreams. Um, and so they helped me get through school and, and have helped me to learn even more um, as a midwife. I love being a midwife because it helps, I get to help women do things that they never knew they could do um, on any given day. Um, when I am not working, which is not that often these days, <laughs> I am with my three and 15 month old loving, raising them, they're amazing. Um, and the next person I get to introduce is Patty. Um, Patty Mojak. She uh, shares a similar property with me in that we both were critical care nurses. So we've got that on our, our side. Thanks, Holly. My name's Patty Mojak, and I'm one of the midwives here. Um, I started with BCU for the first time in 2005. And like Holly said, as a critical care nurse, and my journey was a little bit winding like Leslie's. But once once you're a VCU person, you just find your way back. So I've been on this team coming up on three years now. And I, you know, what midwifery is to me, um, in my late teens, I had a really terrible experience with a phys an OBGYN physician. And then I had a really amazing experience with a midwife. And I was like, how do I do that? Um, so I tried to to keep that experience in the front of my mind and bring it into exam rooms and birthing rooms. And just remember that, you know, there's the potential for patients to feel very vulnerable. And so we have this ability to make that experience really great or really terrible. So I just try to keep that, you know, on my mind interacting with patients. Um, when I'm not midwifing, I am also momming. I have three school-aged kids. And every year I think I'm busier than I was before. And then that makes me nervous about how busy I'm gonna feel next year. Um, so just one day at a time, being a mom and being a midwife are two of the most incredible things. So next up is Megan. And Megan was, start, she was a student with our group way back and she was so <laughs> awesome that we scooped her up as soon as she was back in town and ready to practice. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Um, yeah, I joined the practice about a year and a half ago. Um, I had worked as a midwife up in DC, but was always really trying to get back to VCU because I think like Patty said, you always, once you've been there and had a chance to experience the kind of care that we're able to provide, you always really want to find your way back to this group. Um, and I had just the pleasure of training with Leslie and Melanie and it always kind of felt like home being here. Um, before I became a midwife, I started my career as a pediatric nurse and then worked as a labor and delivery nurse. So I've been in healthcare for about a decade, but um, new still to Richmond. So like Kate, I'm also trying to figure out what's what and enjoying the river and all the things that Richmond has to offer. Um, no children right now, but we do have a 17 pound cat, um, <laughs> is huge, <laughs> but luckily very low maintenance, which is good for the midwife life. Um, um, and I am going to introduce Hagi. Um, I have had the absolute pleasure of working with Hagi for the last year. She is still relatively new to midwifery like me, but she has been a birth advocate and champion and warrior for, <laughs> I don't know how long, many, many years, mm -hmm. and is finally, I think, getting to live out her dream of providing full scope midwifery care. Thank you, Megan. I just love listening to all of you. You're so amazing. So, okay. <laughs> my name is Hagarina Shtasva. My nickname is Hagi, as you've heard. 
and my professional background. I actually never saw myself becoming a nurse. I always knew I wanted to be a midwife, but I kind of had to find my way in the work and evolve, I think, as a human, as a woman, as a mother. I became a mother in my journey to becoming a midwife. So I started in, um, I trained as a medical anthropologist and then went into international public health. I have a master's in public health and I worked a lot around reproductive health access and policy for young people. Um, but young in Africa, we're like less than 35, <laughs> we're young, you know, so it'd be like not teenage pregnancies most of the time, which is what I thought when I was started. But um, but yeah, after public health, I, I kind of found, I just, every chapter came back to midwifery, like that's my soul's calling. And so, and so it's been a 15 year journey, kind of finding my way. I co-founded National Black Midwives Alliance along the way have worked as a birth justice advocate, but I feel home in this. I, I'm at VCU for one year and I'm I'm practicing as a midwife. So that's the new part. And I'm so blessed to be in this group where we can really like work as a microcosm, a world where midwifery is honored and the flow of women and the miracle of birth, but also like right outside our door, we have everything we need in terms of all of the, um, the technology that we have available to us at this time to support women who need it, support babies, support births that need it. So that's kind of my winding intro. Um, what do I, I think I talked about what I love about midwifery in there, sort of. I love the magic of it. I love the experience of it. I love being able to like be with women and families as they emerge new um, I have three children myself, uh, a set of twins, fraternal twins, and another baby. Oh, he's not a baby, he's seven, but three boys. That go <laughs> um, yeah, I think, and I, I mean, for me, with my loves in life, I really, I'm drawn to the ethereal. I really love, like, spirit, like, learning more about different practices and belief systems and kind of tapping into the universal truth and music. I need music in my life all the time. In my interludes, you'll always have music and um, and just art. I like creating art. So that's all I got. I wanted to just also quickly say Leslie, because Leslie didn't get an intro because she came first. So I'll just say Leslie is... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, there's a billion things I'm sure everyone could say, but she is our fearless leader. Mm -hmm. For me, I haven't seen anybody lead with such humility, like so unassuming, but also just so sharp and fierce, mm -hmm. clinically, like totally excellent. But then the warmth, the energy, like just the midwife that Leslie is, I feel so lucky for anybody who happens upon her schedule because there's so much that happens in the room and so many like truths that just come out of her mouth, just kind of everything. <laughs> I just think she, all of them, everybody, but um, Leslie, you needed to get that introduction. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, it's a great point. You know, we really do midwife each other, right? You know, and that's what makes us be able to provide the care to the people that come to us is that um, we do for each other what we do for our patients. And that's really what makes us strong. So with that, um, thank you so much. We'll move on to my little presentation. Um, so this is us, the VCU Nurse Midwifery Service. And again, um, I happen to be the lead nurse midwife. Um, next, we can actually skip that one. <laughs> next, uh, we already went over that. So I just wanted to kind of go over a little bit about the history of midwifery because often people have a lot of misconceptions about midwifery. First picture. Uh, midwives have been attending folks having babies since the beginning of time. It was just completely natural that if somebody was having a baby, you'd call the midwife. That is just what you did. Um, and then with the rise really of medicine and the kind of the founding of medicine, um, birth started to move into the hospital. Part of that was for financial reasons. Can you do next picture? Um, and part of that was just really kind of about science and about the procedure. And with that medicalization of birth, the woman no longer was center. And you can kind of see in that picture, you know, she's draped and um, barely there. And as that happened really in the 
early 1900s, really into the 1960s, and um, more medications were used and women had twilight sleep and really not aware of things. They were separated from their babies. Women said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to the hospital. We want our power. You know, we want to be the central focus. Um, next slide. And so midwife, I'm sorry, women actually started to have unattend, unassisted home births, intended home births, but unassisted. And um, the community said, you know, this isn't safe. We need someone to help these women. And midwives almost were eradicated until the 1970s. Um, midwives started to grow again to help these folks that were wanted to have their babies at home. And then midwifery really grew and expanded until and what we have today in our modern midwife is really most nurse midwives, over 90% of nurse midwives actually attend labor and birth in the hospital. When a lot of folks think if you have a midwife, that means you're having a home birth, which is not the case. Um, there are different types of midwives and we'll get into that. But for most nurse midwives, which is what we are at VCU, um, we attend births in the hospital and still use lots of um, high touch tools um, to help folks through labor. Next slide. So these are the types of midwives. There are certified nurse midwives, which again, is what we as the VCU midwifery service are. There are certified midwives and there are certified professional midwives. Certified nurse midwives usually have an undergraduate degree in nursing and then a master's degree and advanced training in midwifery. Uh, and we are able to prescribe medications, order labs, diagnostic test, whatever. Certified midwives are very similar to certified nurse midwives. This is where it gets a little confusing, but they don't have a nursing background. So they often have a bachelor's or a master's in some other discipline, but have advanced training in midwifery. They actually take the same certifying, certifying exam that we as, as nurse midwives take. Um, so really they're pretty much the same. Um, certified midwives just got licensed to practice this year in Virginia. Yay. Um, but because of that, um, we haven't had much experience with certified midwives. Um, and they're just kind of beginning to grow and we will see, but again, they're able to really do the same things we can do as certified nurse midwives and certified professional midwives are non nurses. Usually it's usually an apprenticeship. Um, edu education plus um, didactic learning in an educational program. Um, certified professional midwives usually work in out of hospital settings doing home births or birth center births. And in the state of Virginia, they're not licensed to prescribe medications. Um, next slide. So in the midwifery model of care, really no matter what type of midwife you are, midwives see the pregnant person as a unique individual. The word midwife actually is from the old English word with woman. So we put women here because obviously there's more fluidity in genders now. So it really is that person-centered care uh, where we want to individualize care around that person and what that person brings to the visit, the pregnancy, and how we can help them develop um, in a healthy way and really enact, for lack of a better word, um, what their vision for labor or birth is. Um, it's a relationship-based care, so we try to spend more time with people and get to know them in a holistic sense. Um, midwifery model really views life transitions as normal, whether that's puberty, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, or even menopause. Those are all normal life transitions. Um, people need support education, guidance through those transitions, but they don't necessarily need to be rescued from it or numbed from it. And our role as midwives is really to walk along people in these life transitions. And we protect, support, and enhance people um, as they're making their journey. Next slide. 
our role again is to promote health and wellness and disease prevention. So I always say we do a lot of anticipatory guidance of teaching um, about what's normal, um, when to reach out if something's not normal, and to anticipate um, changes that may come to be. Again, whether that's through pregnancy or even just in our lives as women and um, what different stages of our lives present. Um, we do physical exam and prescribe medicine, um, medications. One of the other misconceptions about nurse midwives is that we only see pregnant people. We actually do a fair amount of gynecologic care. We, I always call it benign gyne, like benign gynecology. So we do annual exams, pap smears, um, family planning, um, birth control management, um, treatment of infections, help women or folks through perimenopause and even any kind of menopausal management if that's needed. We can order um, mammograms and ultrasounds and really anything that you need. Um, and we work in collaboration with um, community services and help people access those services. Next slide. Our approach to labor and birth, again, is that it's normal until proven others, otherwise. And that really is just then, we only use intervention if it's indicated. Um, you know, you don't automatically have to have an IV, but if you're throwing up a lot and you're getting really dehydrated, you'll probably feel better if you have some IV fluids. We see labor and birth as a natural process. So we really work to support that physiologic process and create a safe environment and a trusting environment for people to do that. Um, that means we provide both physical and emotional support. Um, this picture is actually a picture of a woman who happened to birth um, kind of squatting on the ground and that's Patty next to her with hands on, you know, and being right there with her. Uh, we use non-pharmacologic pain relief options. We do also um, offer pharmacologic pain relief uh, options, um, but that's not usually the first thing we're going to grab out of our bag. We encourage lots of positioning and labor. We want people to walk, to dance, use um, balls, squatting bars, tub and shower. And we do um, both as midwives and as VCU um, provide breast or chest feeding support. Next slide. The benefits that we know actually from research of midwifery care is we see um, lower levels of infant mortality, lower levels of preterm birth, lower levels of C-sections. Uh, we do less labor inductions, uh, less use of anesthesia, and we see a lower incidence of um, perineal or vaginal lacerations. And studies have even done comparative models of low-risk women in traditional OBGYN care and low-risk women in midwifery care, and midwives tend to still have these better outcomes. We also see an increased level of a positive start to breast or chest feeding, and people report a higher satisfaction in care. Look how happy that baby is. Happy to be born into the hands of a midwife. <laughs> Next slide. And so this is just an example of some of the non-pharmacological tools we use. Um, again, we work to create a positive environment. It's hard to see in this picture, but we usually have low lighting and you see those Christmas lights in the background so that we have very soft lighting for women um, so she can kind of get out of her brain and let her primitive brain take over. Um, she's sitting on a ball. We use balls a lot, <laughs> um, both here sitting on it, in bed, in the shower. Um, we love doulas and welcome doulas or support people um, to help with hands-on care for the laboring person. We use massage, acupressure, and again, I mentioned hydrotherapy. And the left-hand side of this picture is our tub. It's kind of hard to see, but we have four labor rooms that have tubs for women to labor in. All the rooms have showers that fit balls, and the head, um, the shower head comes off so we can put hot water on particular areas of women that may be hurting um, during labor. 
And we do lots of affirmations. I always talk about word medicine and the things that we say and what people hear are really, really important. And sometimes we even hang signs around the room just to remind people of their inner strength and their vision and their goals to help them get through. Because labor's hard and folks doubt themselves and they look to us and the people around them to remind them of what it is they really wanted. Next slide. So us, um, we are the longest established midwifery program in Richmond. I actually started the practice in 1998. I was kind of crazy um, and worked 24 seven as an, one midwife for almost two years. Um, and I'm happy to say we've grown to seven midwives. This is a picture of us on a recent retreat this summer. Um, Holly couldn't join us. So we'll put in Holly's little picture right here. Um, we actually really love spending time together. And um, growing and learning more about each other and really the best ways to communicate and the best ways to support people um, in labor and birth. We have a collaborative model at VCU. So that means we work in collaboration with physicians. Um, we utilize their medical expertise if things are deviating from normal um, or if there's some medical complication that we need some um, more guidance on. And sometimes in labor, we work together if people have had previous C-sections or they have um, some medical complication that still could remain within the scope of midwifery, but we want our physician colleagues to be there and maybe come in and meet the women in case we need a little bit more help. Um, we are a low intervention practice, which means we don't do elective inductions. We will do inductions um, for medical reasons. And then we're usually trying to look for the low intervention um, tool to use to help people either during pregnancy with problems or during labor. And again, we focus on physiologic birth, so we really are supportive of labor starting in a spontaneous way. Next slide. So for us, again, we work in collaboration with physician team. Um, we love to say that when you come to VCU, um, you have everything you need from, you know, low um, tech and high touch, which is midwives, to high tech if you need it. And if something changes in your pregnancy or in your labor and you have to move to a higher level of care, you don't have to go anywhere where everybody is right there with you. All our labors and births happen downtown at the medical center, but we see folks in the community, both at Stony Point, um, Nelson Clinic, which soon is gonna be our adult outpatient pavilion. I think we're moving in December to a brand new building um, on Lee Street. So that's so exciting. And then in um, early 20. 22, wow, 2022, that just seems amazing to say that. Um, we're gonna have a short pump location. So that's really exciting that we can meet people out in the community um, where they are. If um, you wanna make an appointment, the number is on the slide and you can also look at the vcumom.com website. Next slide. Oh, oh, and one thing I forgot to say, we also provide group prenatal care. So some people hear about it as centering. We used to do centering and we changed the curriculum to P3. Um, group care is where we take women who have due dates usually within a month of each other and we see them in a group rather than our one-on-one -on -one visit. It is prenatal care. It's actually enhanced prenatal care because the visits are two hours. We love group care and women love group care. People really report a much higher satisfaction with care with group care. There um, are some reports that folks who were involved in group care have a lower incidence of preterm birth. Um, and that even if people do deliver prematurely, their babies have a higher weight and they tend to do um, a little bit better. We love it because it creates social support for people. This picture is actually a little old. I think it's probably about seven years old. Um, and the, some of these women still get together. Um, you create bonds that really last forever. And you know, pregnancy and especially postpartum and parenting can be hard. So it's great to have those connections with other people who are walking the same walk as you. We do group care both um, at Nelson Clinic 
soon to be the outpatient center, and um, also at Stony Point. Next slide. And we are so proud to say that um, our great outcomes as a nurse midwifery service, we have been awarded the Triple AIM Award from the American College of Nurse Midwives for three years in a row. Um, we have been awarded because of our high breastfeeding rates and our very low cesarean section rates and our low preterm birth rate, yay. And we are the only practice in Richmond to have achieved this. So we're really proud of that. Uh, next slide. And VCU is a baby friendly hospital, which means that we are very supportive of lactation. And we have like consultants that are in hospital seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And a lot of our nurses and um, some of our midwives are also trained in lactation. So we have lots and lots of support for lactation. All babies go skin to skin, at least we try to get all babies skin to skin if there's not a medical reason that they can't. Um, in a vaginal delivery, that usually means immediately skin to skin. In a C-section, sometimes we need to do a little assessment of the baby first if there was something we were concerned about, but we also work to get babies skin to skin in the operating room. All babies room in with their mamas, and our pediatric team goes room to room to see babies. Your baby doesn't have to go to the nursery for any routine reason. Um, all the testing um, and assessments are done in your room with you. Um, we also have after delivery um, lactation support. We have a breastfeeding clinic um, at our children's hospital to support people both if things are going well and just to support that, but also if there's any problems. And part of being baby friendly is also supporting that physiologic birth um, and doing lots of education prenatally. So we're, um, I think we're the only hospital in Richmond that are baby friendly, but I could have that wrong. Um, next slide. And so the question people are always ask, or not always ask, but may ask is, well, how do I know if a midwife's right for me? You know, I think the question of, well, what's your vision for birth? You know, do you want to have a baby without an epidural? Is that a goal for you? Do you want to be active in labor and moving around? Um, this mama was moving around. She was really tired, as you can tell from the picture. And I'm doing some work to try to help rotate her baby. Um, do you want to be in a hospital or do you feel better being at home or at a hospital, at a hospital location like a birth center? Um, what are you thinking about for pain relief options? Do you know you want an epidural? If so, VCU midwifery probably is not the right choice for you um, because again, our practice is focused on low intervention and really natural unmedicated birth. And how active do you want to be in your care? We like women to prepare for birth, to read, to do classes, maybe watch videos, make healthy life choices, stay active during the pregnancy. Um, but if you're really looking for an unmedicated birth, low intervention care, um, you know, a patient-centered care, um, then you know, midwifery is really the right choice for you. Next slide. And so that's midwifery overview. Um, thanks for that. And I hope you learned a little bit and have a little bit of a better understanding of midwifery and VCU midwifery services um, and really how we can help you achieve a natural birth. Um, so hopefully, you know, you can make an appointment. There are links on the um, webinar that you can link to make an appointment. And um, you, can all, it's, um, you can also call that 804-628-1263 number um, if you'd like to make an appointment. Um, we would be happy to see you um, and get to know you a little bit better. Um, and please remember to drop any questions you have in the comments and um, we'll get to answering that. So with that, I think we're gonna move on to our question and answer period and um, see how we can explain things a little bit more, clarify things a little bit more. Hmm. Oh, Me I th oh, Megan's on call tonight, and so it looks like she might have had to drop out um, that maybe there was a labor going on. So, um, 
one of the questions we often get is, um, so what if I have some health problems and, but I really want to birth with a midwife? Um, is that possible? Patty, you want to tackle that one? Of, sure. Um, how's that go? Yeah. So the, ver the first step is a conversation because that covers a wide range of possible things. So we sit down and talk and say, okay, what, what is it? What is going on with you? What, is, what are you bringing to the table? And then we talk about what the possible concerns might be and what the options are. And there are a few things that we would say that's higher risk than we can, than we can take on. And we would know that from the outset. Nice. Um, but that's less common than things that are maybe moderate risk or might just need a little bit extra monitoring or we collaborate with the physicians and make a plan together. I like to say sometimes we get physician input to make a plan and then the midwives can implement that plan. Um, so having underlying medical conditions doesn't automatically make midwifery not the right fit for you. And like midwives handle everything, we'll talk all about it and come to a decision together to figure out who's the safest person to take care of you during your pregnancy and birth. Yeah, thanks. That's great. And I would you know, add that even if we're not the right providers, we really do help people navigate the system and find the right providers. I always love what Melanie always says, to help you land softly. Um, <laughs> I love that terminology. Um, and so, you know, we would love to talk to you and figure it out and help figure out where the best place for you is. Um, all right. And then um, we often get a question also about how do I sign up or access group care? Um, how does that work? And um, how do I get into a group? Um, Megan, you want to tackle that? How do people get into group care? Sure. Um, so usually your first visit or two, depending on when you start prenatal care, will still be the one-on-one -on -one visit. So we usually try to talk about group care as an option when we initiate care. And if it's something that you're interested in, we have a really wonderful coordinator um, who we get in touch with and have them reach out to you and talk about the scheduling. And she then helps you get all signed up for it. Um, so usually it's a pretty seamless process. Yeah, thanks. Um, and okay, so I realize I mentioned during the presentation about that we have a low C-section rate. Um, we often do get the question of, well, what is your C-section rate and do we take care of VVACs? Um, Melanie, do you feel up to chatting about that? Uh, Patty, though, I, I want to say one thing, though. Patty, yeah. you did just do our stats. So I, I know. I was going to say, can I, can I yeah. punt to Patty? Because yeah, she is that. our statistician. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'll shoot out the numbers and then you can talk about VVAC, Mel. How about that? That was great. Um, <laughs> So we track all of our numbers and I've kind of taken the informal role of keeping track of that. So for the calendar year 2021, right now we have an 8.2% C-section rate. That does include a couple of unsuccessful VBACs. So our primary C-section rate is somewhere more around 6%, which is amazing. And so I'll let Mel finish the second part of that question. Um, we actually get a lot of women who come to our service for um, trying for a VBAC, which is vaginal birth after cesarean, after they've experienced a cesarean in a previous pregnancy, or they've had a previous pregnancy where they've had, um, you know, a, a cesarean and then another VBAC on, with that. We are, um, I think VCU is prime for those women because we, again, have that high touch care where we can kind of coordinate behind the scenes um, with our physician staff. Our women go for one visit with a physician to talk about surgical risks versus having a vaginal birth and what are the risks um, for mom and babe involved with that. And then come right back to the midwives to talk about um, what happened in their last birth and what we can do to help prepare to, you know, if, if there are options to avoid um, going down the same path again. We have a very high success rate for VBAC, probably one of the highest in the state. I don't know, Patty, what's our yeah. success it's rate? In the, it's in the 80s. 
Or which is back to above, in the 80s. Yeah, which is above and beyond, I think, probably even for the national average um, for success for VBAC. I think a lot of that goes into the fact that we do so much work in the prenatal period to make sure that people are prepared and um, that, you know, that constant support and labor for midwives um, provides people with alternatives for positioning if the last baby was a C-section for posterior presentation or long labors, we can help with lots of those things um, to help avoid going down the same, same hole, so. Thanks, beautifully said, excellent. Which actually, you, you great lead into the next question because you talked about prenatal care. So one of the questions is, how is prenatal care with a midwife different than with a physician. Hoggy, you want to take that? You wanna... <laughs> I was debating between you and Holly, but <laughs> you can both talk about it. You, you both have been patients yes. in midwives too. <laughs> yes. No, I'd be happy to, to go. And Holly, if there's anything you want to add, please do. Um, it's a big question because, of course, there's variance, you know, among midwives and among physicians. But I'll say in general, just with, um, I guess I'd start with the same pieces, which is that VCU is an evidence-based place. So nobody's like pushing you into any intervention that's not warranted or necessary off the top. But, um, and we also adhere to the same kind of schedule where there's, you know, we're going to do your anatomy scan between 18 and 20 weeks, the big ultrasound where you see all your baby parts and your gestational diabetes screening at 28. Whether you're with a midwife or a doctor, those kind of visits are going to happen. The difference, I think, like Leslie, you said so much of it in the pieces about relationship building and just the model of our care because our patients are low risk, we can really lean into like this amazing experience and what are the tweaks and pieces? What are your questions? What are your fears? What are the, what are the things? I'm sorry, I have children. They don't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but just it being like a natural process, we, we believe that. And so we look at it, like how can we establish trust and accountability? How can we empower you with information you know, what are the things that you need for your brain to let go so that your body can move forward in this process that it's primed for? Because really birth itself is an act of surrender. And so the whole prenatal care, we're like in these rooms kind of meeting you where you're at. Like, what is it? Are there specific things at this week's visit that we need to cover? Are there tests that need to be done? Are there questions that you've come with? Are you looking for a doula? Do you have questions why a doula is important? Do you like what? you know, meeting you wherever it is, physically, emotionally, prenatally specific, childcare questions even sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so it's really about like that that informed decision making and processing and um and also discourse because there might be like uh, Leslie mentioned um an IV. So maybe you're somebody who doesn't like things in your body and you don't know why you would ever need an IV, but you're also GBS positive. That's an easy one. So we would just talk about why is the recommendation for IV antibiotics and labor and why, why the IV? Why is that important? We, we kind of work it out because we want you to feel like this is your process and you've claimed the things that are in the plan and you also trust the providers who are holding your process dear, you know, close to us too. So we talk a lot among ourselves too as a team. I think that's also something special. Mm -hmm. We update each other every, all the time on like what we've experienced with you, with you, what are the tender pieces? What are the critical clinical pieces? How can we support you? So that's a difference, I think, a stark one in midwifery care. Yeah, yeah I, you said that so beautifully. I just love listening to you talk. <laughs> You know, great command of language. You know, and um, I think that's what you said is true, not only for um, pregnant people, but also for well-person care, you mm -hmm. know, of listening and supporting and advocating for. for. Um, there was also something you, you oh, I know what it was, that um, the, I think that's the other difference is we communicate with each other so people don't have to repeat their stories a million times. And um, it's not ever going to be 
well, Melanie said I can do this. And then Patty says, no way in Hades, like no way that doesn't happen. You know, we do lots of documentation on charts and also share with each other again, you know, where people are at. And I love what you said, the tender points and the medical points, you know, so Mm -hmm. we really know folks and can truly be with them. And that's a great lead into the, another question of, um, can I choose my midwife? Holly, you want to take that one? (laughs) Sure. Um, so just because we trust each other so much, it is important to us to honor you get the midwife you need for labor. Uh, generally, we request that you see all of us at some point in the prenatal pattern. So it gives a lot easier to trust someone that you've had a conversation with once or twice before the throes of labor ensue. Um, so the easy answer is no. Um, You could see one of us more than the other, but it doesn't guarantee that person will be with you in labor. I usually tell people the odds of knowing any one of us and falling in love are pretty high. (laughs) (laughs) Good hands. Pregnancy hormones help. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I always say talk to your baby. Like ask yeah. if you have if your baby, you know, the baby will be born into the hands that the baby's meant to be born into. That's so exactly right. Yeah. 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 We all say that and it really is true. Like it's so amazing <laughs> to me how I'm like, hey, so that patient really needed Patty because she had to have an EKG and all this <laughs> intensive stuff. I'd be like, what? <laughs> and, uh, you always handle that so well. Um so how about, here's another question. Can I bring a doula and others to support me in my labor and birth? Megan, that's probably also about, you know, how COVID has impacted all that, our yeah. favorite thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously COVID has had to change our visitor policy pretty significantly. I think pre-COVID, it was a little like anything goes, we would have births with many people in the room and we'd have births with one person in the room. But um, because of COVID and trying to keep um, you all safe, trying to keep each other safe to make sure that we continue to have providers who are healthy and well and can take care of people, we've had to limit our visitor policy. It's currently that you can have one support person. um, So your partner, husband, boyfriend, mom, sister, whoever you want to be there you can have one person. And if you have a certified um, doula to support you, that they can also be there as well. Um, there, It's possible that in the future, if, if COVID cases die down, that we might be able to um, expand that. But that's actually coming from VCU as a whole, not just from the midwifery service. Great. Thank you. Um, Hey, Kate, I'll, I'll toss this one to you. <laughs> yeah. but both the flu vaccine and COVID vaccines are recommended for pregnant people. Can you get both shots at the same time and where can you get them? Um, you can get both at the same time. Um, you know, I think that this is something that has been shown to be a good part of prenatal care and um, widely recommended. And they're massively available now. Lo- most local pharmacies have them. We have them at VCU. And um, yeah, it's definitely something worth considering in pregnancy. Yeah, we at VCU don't have them to um, administer during prenatal visits, but most, most primary care providers have them. Or like Kate said, you can go to any pharmacy. Um, and get them. And um, I've been asked a lot about timing of that and when is the best timing to do that. And to be really honest with you, we don't know. Um, Especially now with boosters coming out, people are asking, like, should I get it at 24 weeks or 32 weeks or 36 weeks? Yes, is what I say. (laughs) Because we don't really know the answer to that. But we know that it's um, probably beneficial. Um, and protective. Um, Another question is, um, I've been receiving prenatal care elsewhere, but want to transfer my care to VCU Health Midwives. How do I go about doing so? Patty, you want to, how does that happen? How does that work? And and can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. So the midwifery service will take transfers up to, I think about 36 weeks. Is that right? Um, And it's actually just as easy as making an appointment. So you just call, hi, I'm going to have an appointment with one of the midwives. 
you can tell them you're transferring care. They'll get you on one of our schedules. And if you bring your records with you, we will kiss you. And <laughs> in a good way, if you're willing to be kissed. But if that you're, would be if you're vaccinated. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Tracking down records is the bane of all of our existences. So anything that you can bring with you, even if it's on a phone. And what? You can me. <laughs> what? Um, and then we'll sit and, and review. Review your pregnancy, review your health history, history review your vision, what you're looking for. We get a lot of people who transfer and say, I feel like I haven't been listened to and now I want, I want to be somewhere that I'm, that I'm heard. Um, and that's what we're really great at. So just make an appointment and we'll hit the ground running and mm -hmm. it will be great. Yeah, I agree. It's actually very common that women transfer into our practice. Probably almost 20% of people transfer and it's usually in the third trimester because that's when <laughs> folks start to think, uh oh, <laughs> this isn't going the way I thought it was. It starts to get real. And, you know, your vision really becomes turned towards birth. And what's that going to be like? And sometimes people are getting pressured about inductions or whatever. And, um, you know, or they're just feeling like, as Patty said, um, they're not being heard. Um, there's one last question of, can I have a water birth at VCU? That's Holly's favorite thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not yet. Um, not yet. I've been I've been saying that for five years. Not yet. Um, so no, we really use water for labor, and we'll ask folks to get out of the tub if they're pushing. Um, yes, we've had oops, babies in the tub, and it happens. But we don't go into the tub planning on having a birth. So. so we ask folks to get out. We can squat down right next to the tub and have a baby. Um, we have birthing stools to sit on also um, to have your baby right next to the tub or just stand and lean on your partner and have a baby. We've done all that too. Um, we'll be wherever you are. And, um, but maybe soon, maybe coming soon. Um, we'll see now that we're like fully staffed, maybe, maybe we'll get, make it happen. All right. Um, I think that's it for our questions. Um, and so we'll wrap it up. Thank you again so much for joining us. It's actually so fun for us to see each other as midwives. Um, we work lots and we don't work together very much. So we don't get to see each other, um, especially in clothes. And <laughs> um, so that's really fun. And so thanks for giving us the opportunity to do this and share what we really love with you. Um, again, if you want to make an appointment, it's 804. I got to look at the number. Um, it's there, 804-628-1263. And just say you want to schedule a new OB visit and ask to see one of the midwives. The call center um, has the name of all of us. You don't have to memorize it. And we're, again, both downtown right now at Nelson's Clinic, soon to be the outpatient pavilion. And we're at Stony Point. So with that, I'm going to say good night. I hope you have a great rest of the evening and get to enjoy this fall air and hope we get to meet you in person someday thanks thank you thank good you. night good night yeah,